Okay, uh, hi everybody, let's uh, start. Um, may I ask you to turn on your camera, please? Thanks now. If others could also turn on their camera, that would be awesome. So today, the plan is to continue discussion about macroarchitecture. Um, we will discuss transition to multi-cycle. Um, we start by reviewing some of the previous um, single cycle uh, concepts that we have learned um, quickly, and then uh, doing the transition into multi-cycle, um, which is more exciting. Uh, before we start, uh, do you have any question that I can answer? So your um, quiz has been graded um, and uh, I will release it um, as uh, you expected um, the grades uh, like by default uh, are not good and we discuss it uh, why um, so hopefully you are clear about the answer but what I'm going to do is actually to um, for for this specifically a specific quiz um, like the grades are from 50 um, whatever grade you received I'll add um, 50 to all of you um, and you can have it um, from 100. Um, so the grade in greater scope is still uh, based on 50, but you can consider it uh, by adding one another 50. That's your actual grade from 100 um, for this quiz. Um, and that's what I consider uh, for, for this quiz. And the key reason is that, um, as we discussed, the questions were tricky. Um, but uh, hopefully you learn something. Um, okay, let's uh, start. Um, and by the way, like if um, I mentioned this, um, like what a specific chapter you need to look at from the textbook, that's, uh, I, that's what I highly recommend you. Um, but um, again, it, it, it's not uh, necessary, mandatory. Um, you should be fine just listening to the lecture and doing the homework um, project and stuff. Um, hopefully um, you do well uh, in, um, in this um, new homework that you have. Uh, you will get another one and next week um, you will have the midterm. Okay, this is, um, if you remember, this is um, the full uh, macro-architecture, MIPS macro-architecture um, that we went through. Um, if you remember, we discussed this uh, instruction from um, types by type. Um, and we have examples of each type um, constructing the data path and also uh, discussing this um, contour signal, how um, how we design this contour signal to send the right uh, contour signal to all of these um, components uh, in the macro architecture in order to, um, to execute um, the um, instructions uh, correctly according to their semantics. Um, so, um, and if you remember, um, we had um, all of these, um, the um, semantic of each instruction and um, R type, I type, J type, and how uh, the macro architecture will find out about the right um, bits uh, in each um, 32 bits of each instruction in order to generate the contour signal and uh, send out the right data to the right path in the macro architecture. Um, I'm not going to discuss them again. Um, but in particular, um, we also 
briefly discuss about the control signal. These control signals are essentially very simple. Um, is nothing uh, more than uh, basically constructing these equations that you see on the right hand side of this table um, with hardware. Um, so these are um, some statements um, that you can implement all of this um, using uh, appropriate logic gates. Um, so in digital um, design, hopefully you learned about um, this uh, previously, uh, how to construct this um, combination. So um, these will be again uh, constructed um, by hardware appropriate um, logic gates. And the pattern is so simple. The only thing uh, for almost all, all of these uh, instructions, all of these um, control signals, um, you only need the uh, opcode. And the opcode uh, is um, once you fetch the instruction, um, after decoding, you have the, uh, the fix and you know that this opcode is fixed in terms of size is a six uh, bits. Um, in almost all instructions are the same location, except the R type, which is uh, defined by func. Um, so in terms of where to find it, it's so simple. Uh, the only thing uh, which is slightly different from all of the other control signal is this PC SRC2. Um, so, um, which depends on the opcode, this um, branching um, opcode, um, but also depends on part of the data pass. Um, B condition is satisfied. And we discussed about this, this, um, this signal, this B condition. Um, so if we go back here, right? Um, so in this case, um, you see B condition here. Uh, B condition is, think about it, is not part of the instruction. It's part of the data pass. It's a signal that is generated uh, within this microarchitecture, um, part of the uh, data pass. Um, and this control signal, um, if you see directly uh, PC, SRC2 depends on um, some stuff uh, that comes from this uh, line and also the B condition, um, which is not part of the uh, instruction, uh, which is not part of the opcode, nothing. So you cannot generate this part of the um, control signal uh, using only the, um, the bits in the uh, in the instruction that you fetched, uh, but you need to get it calculated uh, throughout this data pass. So that's that's actually the only difference. But the rest of the control signals, you can, as long as you fetch the instruction and you read the opcode, um, you can right away generate these, these control signals, all of them, uh, except the last one, which um, I described, okay? Do you have any question about this? Are these clear? Good, um, so again, um, these control signals are generated, um, simply implemented by uh, some logic gates, um, combination logic gates. Uh, where you can implement them easily and fix um, in in MIPS again. Like this is this is a specific marker architecture. This is one specific implementation of MIPS. Um, even for MIPS, uh, there could be multiple different marker architecture, um, right? And um, 
even if you um, consider more complex uh, uh, architectures um, beyond MIPS, uh, like x86, um, is not as simple as this that you can generate all control signals uh, using combinational logic. Um, so there would be uh, some other um, stuff going on. There would be uh, they would be even more costly and more complicated uh, to generate these control signals. And yeah, in some cases, even they could lie in the critical path as well. So it's not the case that we simply uh, need to um, have the logic gates um, that typically combinational logic gates is so quick, um, even um, the time that it takes to execute them most of, most of the time are negligible um, comparing like uh, with the memory access and, and so on. Um, so and that's why it's like simple, elegant and like quick um, in terms of generating these control signals. That's part of the simplicity of MIPS as well. Um, so make sure you understand how these control signals are generated. And for example, um, the control signal for uh, for ALU, right? So um, again, um, in this case, um, if the opcode is zero, like you remember, you need to go and find funk part of the um, instruction and then um, use that, that part um, in order to, um, to generate the uh, control signal. Um, the rest is obvious, like, for example, LW, SW, storeboard, um, branch, um, right? Um, so, um, and sometimes, um, like, you, it's don't care, meaning that this part is, is not really relevant. Sometimes not in as, you remember not in all cases uh, you needed ALU in MIPS, right? So you had some instructions, um, like for example, um, jump, if you remember, um, you didn't need um, ALU. So in this case you send uh, don't care signal to ALU. Um, but for example, for a specific um, a structure like load word or store word, you need a very particular uh, functionality from ALU um, only doing addition. Um, so you expect a specific functionality um, in some cases, in some other cases in like R type, you know that like it really depends on, on the particular R type instruction that you have. And you know that we have several of these instructions. Hopefully this is also clear in terms of like one specific example of probably the most complicated um, control signal that needs to be generated. So here you see the AU operation. This is where you um, send out what um, a specific um, operation um, with ALU up, right? So you see ALU up, um, what a specific op operation um, you, need, uh, you need to do. Um, and here um, you see that instruction zero to five, um, these six bits um, that are located uh, from bit number zero to five determine the um, determine what what a specific um, function that uh, you want this uh, uh, to be done in in ALU uh, would otherwise like as we discuss in load word the store word stuff um, like we only need addition um, in in this case. So hopefully you can correspond uh, 
the macro architecture with the control signal and like you understand the whole data path uh, throughout this macro architecture and you can at least interpret it. Um, the, the key reason also is that sometimes um, when you uh, when you see a macro architecture, even for MIPS, right? So that might be a slightly different. Uh, you, you should not freak out. Uh, like um, it, you might see a slightly different like uh, connections uh, name of the control signal. Uh, And I think I, I have one slide uh, explaining the, like one alternative uh, macro architecture, specifically the, the one that has been used in uh, in the textbook that you have. Uh, it is a slightly different, um, but um, you should be able to understand that as well. Um, so it's very simple, the, the whole mapping uh, of this all together. Like for example, for jump, right? So we discussed this, right? So um, you don't even need this part of the macro architecture. The only uh, part that you need is like related to um, basically uh, using this adder here um, and then um, generating the uh, address of the um, instruction memory that you need to retrieve the next next instruction, right? So the only data pass that is relevant is this upper part, um, which we already have discussed. Um, right. Um, so, um, and, and um, we also discuss about um, like when we have a specific um, type, for example, in this um, R type, um, right? What uh, what part of the instruction needs to go where? Um, now here you see the whole macro architecture. When we constructed this, um, we put together one component at the time. It was a smaller macro architecture, but here you see the whole uh, full picture. Uh, of this macro architecture and um, what uh, control signal um, needs to be sent to what component, right? So for example, in, um, in our type, um, if you remember, we didn't even have the data memory at all, right? So, and here you see the reason why like you put like zero, you see zero, meaning that like, um, there shouldn't be any uh, harm or any changes uh, to the data memory. Um, so by um, generating zero uh, as a control signal for this case, meaning that um, you should um, not write or read from memory. It's not relevant at all. Um, and the rest of the um, the rest of the control signal that, that you already see here. But uh, here again, you see that in R type, you definitely need to, um, to write to the register, um, depending on what register is determined in the instruction. Um, so you send the control signal one for reg write. Um, and, um, and again, like um, going back, like um, you remember this, um, now go back to this table. Uh, you should uh, be able to um, to basically uh, make this correspondence uh, one by one, right? So for example, for uh, our type, um, reg right was one, right? And if you evaluate this, um, Okay, uh, opcode is not a store word, uh, is not branch, is not J or JR, which in this case, um, R type instructions, neither of these. Um, so this uh, GPR write should be enabled. And in this case, yes, this makes sense. Um, 
or for um, for the memory um, memory read and write. You see the memory read and write. So in this case, um, memory read is enabled only uh, if the instruction is uh, load word. A load word is not one of these R types, right? So in this case, uh, we know that this uh, memory should be zero, specifically by evaluating this equation for R type. The same for uh, mem write as well. So if this is S uh, SW, should be set to one. In all other cases, should be set to zero. And R type, like none of the uh, R type instructions. Um, so a store word is not R type again. Um, so um, in this case, this uh, mem write is also um, be evaluated to zero. Okay. Um, so you should, what I'm saying is that you should make the correspondence between this table, um, this um, contour signal that is generated combinationally with uh, what you see here uh, for each specific, um, each specific um, type of instruction or even uh, particular instruction. Um, Is there any question? Is is it clear? Hopefully, this is clear and simple enough for you to follow. Okay. Um, good. Is there any question in the chat? The same for I, I type again, like I don't want to spend much time again, I type um, zero, zero memory is not relevant. Um, and the only difference between um, R type um, and I type um, is, um, is that in R type, you have two registers, right? Uh, to, um, to use in order to write to the third register. So definitely need to write uh, to register in uh, both cases, right? So the rate write in both cases are the same. Um, the only difference is that this, um, in R type, um, in I type, you have immediate and you need to use this part of um, the data path by sign extended it and uh, sending it out to ALU um, as a second operand. So in I type, the second operand really uh, comes from the, um, the immediate part of the instruction, while in R type, the second operand comes from the second register where you have, right? So that's why you see like one pass. Um, you see this one is enabled uh, here for R type. Um, see the title of the slide. And when we move to I type, um, we use the other path because we need to use part of the instruction, the, um, the immediate part of the instruction, sign extend it and pass it to ALU as the second operand. So ALU, like in all instruction, required two, two operands, right? Um, and that's what you what you see here. Okay. Um, and um, like in this case, in in the I type um, by the uh, by the opcode, um, and also um, in R type by the function part, right? So if you remember, in R type, um, opcode is zero, meaning that you should go uh, and find the function part. Uh, in order to uh, get the ALU operation. In this case, um, the opcode is, um, is really what you need um, in order to generate the, uh, in order to decode the, uh, the right ALU operation. That's the difference between these two. Um, the other part, as you see, with respect to the memory between these two are 
exactly the same. Um, the same for um, the upper part where um, the next piece is determined. Um, so the whole thing is the same. The only difference is um, what you use um, uh, as a second operand uh, and versus the, uh, the immediate part of the instruction. Um, so hopefully you can follow this by contrasting these two type of uh, instruction. In a store word, um, again, one of those uh, data movement uh, type, um, and also in um, load word as well, right? So depending on whether it's a store word or load word, this control signal for memory would interchange, right? One of them is one, one of them is zero. Um, these two uh, using the same, um, so it's very similar data pass, right? Um, so in load word, um, so you need to generate an address. Um, so what you need is to generating an address um, in order to go and find the right memory location to retrieve the data, okay? Um, and also you see here the read data part is what you send out to this register because once you retrieve it, you will put it into one of these register. Um, and what register to write comes from the instruction part, it's number 16 to 20. Um, so this write register knows uh, what register you want to use in order to um, to put the content of the memory there in, into the right register. And here um, in load word, um, we require ALU. Um, the only operation that we require from ALU is just adding. Um, if you remember the semantic of load word, um, you, um, you really had, um, you had to generate one address by adding um, PC plus um, shifting two times the immediate address and uh, in order to find the, um, the target um, memory address to retrieve the data. The same thing uh, for store word, but in a store word you write to the memory. Um, and that's why your register write is zero, meaning that you don't want to uh, write to the register at all because um, you want to write to the memory in this case. And the rest of the um, contour signal are exactly the same. Um, for branch, um, again, branch is uh, one of those probably complex um, complex instruction. Um, so here um, you see that uh, we need B condition um, that is generated here and you need to send it with um, this branch control signal in order to generate PCSRC2. Um, and, um, and then um, once this has been calculated, um, then you um, you determine the next control, uh, the next um, part of the memory that uh, the PC needs to point out, point out to. Um, but again, like um, there would be some um, comparison, right? So you want to compare. Uh, two things in order to determine the branch conditioning, right? It's not like jump where uh, there would be always a uh, jump uh, to another part of the memory. In um, branch, it really depends on the condition and this condition, um, this B condition, uh, determine whether the branch should really happen or not. Um, if this is zero, meaning that um, similarly, um, there wouldn't be any branch and PC just incremented by four similar to others. So, um, 
and the other part is so clear so we don't want to read or write to the memory these are irrelevant this is irrelevant um, and here um, we read um, data from register if you remember like we we had two registers to to compare um, so you you know the if you remember semantic of uh, branch um, you understand um, the rest and this is really the only uh, instruction that um, that that is dependent on this B condition signal that is generated in the data pass and like you cannot you cannot do it um, just by decoding the the, the instruction um, and that's logical right so if you're supposed to by just decoding the uh, instruction to decide uh, right so it's uh, it wouldn't be branch because branch needs to dynamically decide um, like based on the content of uh, two register that you read whether the branch should happen or not so it has some dynamic aspect with respect to other uh, instruction that uh, you have in in this ISA yep Okay, um, so um, so in this control signal again, uh, we discussed this is like um, the implementation is so simple. Um, the control signal generated combinationally based on the instruction um, because it is necessary in single cycle uh, microarchitecture due to all constraints that we have discussed about single cycle microarchitecture. Um, but in addition to this, there are, I mean, in, in addition, this is not the only way to generate this control signal. We discussed it briefly uh, in the last lecture. Um, there are other ways um, to generate the control signal um, besides using combinational logic is using sequential logic, basically um, what is called microprogram control, where you use memory, right? So um, you use memory, um, uh, read memory in order to, um, to generate this um, control signal. Um, so you essentially store the control signal somewhere in the memory. Uh, once you read it, you are able to have this um, um, control signal uh, from from the memory instead of like um, generating it um, combinationally. So that's two different way, two totally different way of generating the control signal. Uh, so hopefully, um, the difference is clear um, but to note that in um, single cycle architecture um, single cycle implementation for example in MIPS um, you definitely need to use combinational logic um, in order to in order to generate this control signal um, and you know the reason, um, or maybe it's better to ask you, what? Why do you think uh, it is necessary in single cycle? Can anybody um, explain why? Is it because in a single cycle microarchitecture, um, as you go through the cycle, everything is synced together. So you need it. You need to keep that 
control signal generated procedurally as you go through the various steps of that architecture. You don't have a ton of different things happening at the same time for different um, sets of instructions. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, so again, um, think about it. That's that's a very good um, answer. Um, so in single cycle, you have one cycle um, to um, to basically execute the instruction that uh, you fetch. Okay, you have only one cycle, no matter what instruction it is. Um, the only way uh, to do it is to use this single cycle. So you cannot say, "Hey, like for the next instruction that I'm going to execute." I generate the control signal in previous cycle, right? Uh, no, because like, um, and you will see in uh, like multi-cycle, this is uh, what's happening. Um, but in a single cycle, you have one cycle in order to, to do everything, um, including generating the control signal and doing the whole um, life cycle of an instruction from fetching all the way to um, executing and storing the data, um, the results you need to, so basically the whole cycle, as you remember, you need to do it um, in one cycle. And you have this constraint that you have one cycle in order to do everything. So that's, necessary uh, actually in single cycle macro architecture. Um, but it is not really necessary in multi-cycle. You can decouple these two um, and that's somehow beautiful, um, especially like uh, this decoupling because like we are talking about two different things shouldn't be uh, coupled together, um, these two. Um, so, um, you you could um, like even before uh, executing a particular instruction, you could generate the um, control signal signal in other um, cycles as you go. Um, so you don't have um, in multi cycle you don't have this constraint um, at all. And that's more elegant design. Um, yeah, so this is, um, this is another example of um, MIPS um, macro-architecture as you have it in, uh, in the book. Um, so as you see it, like it looks a slightly different slightly is very similar, right? So the components are similar. You have PC, instruction memory, data memory, register file, ALU, right? Um, and what, uh, what part of the instruction needs to send where, um, but there might be some uh, small differences, right? Especially with the layout. So don't freak out if you see the same thing in different layout, uh, but also like in some small part of this control signal, right? For example, in data memory, um, we um, we have um, one signal mem right, um, which um, determine whether we want to write to the memory or not the same for read write, um, which uh, if you think about it, if if this is set to one, for example, uh, for mem write, uh, meaning that we want to write to the memory in all other cases, meaning that uh, we cannot write, but we can read, right? But sometimes you want to have an explicit uh, control signal um, for both read and write separately for data memory and also register file. 
this is like a slight difference between how you implement um, each component, right? So again, these are components that will be implemented by hardware. Um, what ports you want to have uh, for each component uh, and the semantic of each port. Um, with this a slight difference, um, you can execute uh, instruction as previously with the other version of the microarchitecture. There's no semantic difference between these two um, very similar macro architecture, slight difference in terms of like these ports for each component. Um, so these are like, these two are one-to-one -one essentially correspondences. They are not two different macro architecture, but there are slight differences in terms of like uh, each contour signal and so on. But the rest is pretty much the same. Um, like for example, for um, for load word, um, so similarly you need to um, get the PC. Um, you ask instruction memory um, to uh, to fetch the instruction, and then you need to read the source operand from register file, and then um, like the um, sign extend the um, the immediate part. Uh, in order to um, generate the right um, access, uh, the, the right address. Um, so here you uh, you write, um, you get the right address in data memory. Once you have that, you read from uh, memory and you write it to a particular register here. Um, and obviously you need to uh, increment PC and uh, this PC, uh, incremented PC, and the whole thing that we, uh, this, this thing, the previous part, the read part and writing to register file should, should get executed right at this, um, the uh, positive uh, side of the cycle. Um, so, um, there would be some need for coordination that uh, this coordination synchronization happens throughout the um, throughout the cycle uh, using this different part of the cycle in order to to do any synchronization in the execution if needed. Um, and if you remember, we we have discussed this um, like when we 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 have discussed the um, the assembly programming. And these are again like the um, control signals um, that are determined now in a table with different instruction and using a specific opcode, right? Um, this is the way how you set each control signal. And instead of having combination logic, you evaluate each and like um, having the right um, either zero or one uh, or don't care, uh, meaning that is not relevant um, for each of these control signal accordingly. So this is like a slightly different, but again, like same way of, you know, that like previous table that you had, we discussed using this combination logic, you, you can like transform this into this simpler representation. These are not two different things. <laughs> the same thing, but uh, slight transformation from one another. And this is the full, um, the full uh, microarchitecture, um, different variation. So again, like if anywhere, like in the book, in the exam, homework, whatever, you saw different variation, don't freak out, like try to reason and make a correspondence to what you already know or you have seen. Okay. Um,
Right, so let's have also, um, we discuss about this part, the performance evaluation. Um, so I'm not going to talk about it, um, but there are some um, high level discussion also trying to, um, to understand, um, try to make a transition to multi-cycle by like briefly discussing the bad part of the single cycle um, and some ideas how we could um, how we could uh, improve um, and we know how like by uh, doing this multi-cycle design that we are going to discuss from now on. Um, so I'm going to skip this because you have already discussed this in length previously. Uh, but if you have any question and if you want me to clarify anything about this performance analysis, now it's the time I'm happy to discuss. Um, but um, in single cycle, um, we know that the uh, each instruction takes one um, cycle. So we have discussed this CPI cycle um, per instruction. Um, also, like you had this uh, as a part of the quiz, right? Um, somehow relevant um, to this, um, that uh, no matter how complex an instruction is, um, you spend the same time, uh, which is not good, uh, meaning that um, the um, the cycle time will be determined by the slowest um, instruction um, and the fast uh, instruction have not any particular influence uh, toward the performance of the program that you you write which is um, which is not a good design uh, meaning that if uh, if the critical path of a particular design determined by the slowest instruction, um, then um, there are lots of opportunities will be missed, right? Uh, and in particular, if you think about it, like um, if you have like 20 different instruction and like one instruction, like say load word, or store word determine the critical path by improving performance of this um, um, like instruction which are quick or not as slow as a store word, you don't get any performance boost in your program, no matter what. Because again, like, and we, we had example of this uh, in previous uh, lecture, uh, if you remember, um, which, which somehow is, is not a good design because like any, any performance improvement, any optimization for the other instructions have, has no influence toward the performance of the system that, uh, that you write. Um, so um, that's, that's somehow why such design is, um, is, not, is not a good design uh, essentially. Um, Maybe also um, to, to make th things slightly more concrete, um, let's, let me see. So for example, in this case, this is um, very um, particular, Yet another um, example of uh, performance, and this this is useful to review uh, because again, it's relevant to performance from different perspective, right? In this case, um, 
what you see is different stages of each instruction from R type, I type, um, this LW and SW branching and jumping. And in the columns, uh, you see um, different stages and the corresponding latency uh, for each uh, type of instruction, right? So here, what you see is that uh, memory unit read or write um, takes 200 picosecond, okay? ALU um, and others, um, like whatever you have in the macro architecture takes 100 picoseconds. Again, these are like artificial numbers, but somehow makes sense because like, you want to, um, ALU's operation is typically way faster than memory. I mean, proportionally, this doesn't make sense, but like it should be, you should expect having lower latency for ALU and other. Register file, um, read or write like here, 50 picosecond, um, and other combination logic uh, throughout the micro architecture, like for example, say, um, Max, right? Max is one of those combination logic that you had seen in the macro architecture a lot. Um, the MIPS macro architecture. Um, so, um, for example, here, like you have several Maxes, right? This Maxes was helpful to like rewire the writing uh, for each particular. Um, instruction instead of like copying ALU like numerous time, uh, use max in order to select and like make, make macro architecture smaller, uh, like less complex. Um, so max is typically useful for selecting multiple inputs, right? Here we assume that this uh, combination logic, the other combination logic are taking zero time. Okay, so here for R type, we know that like, and you see here, like for no matter what instruction, you have memory access, um, again, related to the question that you had in quiz, right? So no matter what instruction you have to retrieve uh, or fetch the instruction. So you need one access to the memory, no matter what. But in sometimes if you look at the columns, um, you need second access to the memory, the data um, memory, okay? Um, so um, in um, decoding, um, so you need to have access to the register file. So you see the associated time um, in some instruction, in most instruction, you need ALU except jump. Um, some you need mid second memory access and some you also need to write to a register, um, which is um, 15 uh, picosecond. Okay, and if you like add uh, these up, okay, um, you get um, the, um, the delay for each instruction. So here, like uh, if you add all of these numbers, um, for R type, make it 400 picosecond. Uh, for I type, um, you get um, the same. Um, okay. Um, for uh, load word, 600. For store word, uh, 550. Um, for branching um, 350 and for jump uh, 200. So you see this um, variance across different type of um, type of instruction. Yes, Ross. So like now that we like, saw that the instructions that require access twice, but what about the instructions that don't require any access to memory at all? Like the third question. Um, didn't we discuss it? We might have maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm so, crazy. So there is there is there is none, right? Right, you're right. Okay, that's okay. That's I just right. Yeah, good question. Um, yeah, so as you see, like uh, looking at this, the answer is none, right? Uh, because 
you essentially have required at least one one access to the to the memory, uh, right? Uh, but the important point here, like as you see, this variance or deviance of latency, the delay across all of these different type of instruction, where again, like the um, cycle time um, is determined. So in this case, what would be the uh, the critical path? What would be the cycle time? Uh, it would be 600 picoseconds, right? Exactly, right. Um, that's correct. Um, so if you get such question, easy question, right? So you know how to answer. Um, so in single cycle, um, you simply need to calculate the delay of each instruction and knowing which, uh, what instruction is taking uh, the longest and that's, um, that's your critical path in single cycle. And that's uh, what you need to consider for cycle time. Okay. Um, but really if you change the value, um, the value of each, um, each of these, right? So for example, for memory units. So if you like change it, um, if you play with these numbers, like again, these are artificial number. Um, it's not the case that like this load word would be the um, would be the longest time. Sometimes maybe like a store word would be the longest time. Really depends. Or other instruction, even R type, right? Um, it's not typically the case because uh, you expect memory would be. Um, would have a much higher uh, latency. So typically these uh, instruction that require access to the memory multiple times, uh, those would be um, on the critical path in single cycle. Um, and um, yeah, um, so for example, for um, for R type and I type, so this is this is how you can um, you can think about it, right? And again, like um, one thing that you did not see in the slide was about this um, incrementing PC. Okay, um, typically this incrementing PC shouldn't lie on the critical path. Um, and we know that, like, again, in single cycle, both of these needs to happen um, in, uh, in the same cycle. Um, but for incrementing PC, um, you need to use the other, uh, separate other, or like, um, and also like ALU, right? Uh, but essentially, you need like other um, in, in this case um like for either r type or i type um so you you only increment it by by four um assuming here in this example we assume that this uh maxes takes no time so they wouldn't add anything to the delay the only thing is like we use other and that's taking 100 uh picosecond that's that's the only cost that we we pay for incrementing PC in this R type and I type. Um, that, that this part would change, um, like in, for example, say um, in um, in the case of um, branch, right? Um, we know that we we want to use the second ALU, right? So that that would increase it to two hundred uh, picosecond. Um, in this case, still not on the critical path, but um, it's not the case that even with this example, all incrementing PC would take the same time in branch, since this part will be also used. Um, this is again another other, so that would add to the latency of incrementing PC um, part of the instruction. OK. 
Okay. Um, but in addition to um, to incrementing PC, typically the other um, path uh, where um, it is start by um, reading the instruction um, in both R type and I type, you need to read um, from a register file. So, um, so reading from memory, again, instruction memory, the same as data memory, 200 picosecond, adding 50 because of reading from register file, make it 250. And then using ALU, uh, another 100, make it to 350. Um, we don't need to uh, access data memory at all in neither R or I type. Uh, so nothing changes, but you also, at the end, you need to write uh, to uh, register file, adding another 50, so make it 400 picosecond. Okay. And these two parts are in parallel, right? So here 100, here 400. Um, so in total 400 and don't make a mistake like uh, adding these two numbers together right because they are executed in parallel okay um, that's one important thing you need to know um, so in load word um, more or less similar um, 200 picosecond for accessing memory and then uh, you need to read from register file and also you need to uh, use ALU. Um, so another 50, another 100. But here um, you need to read from memory again. Um, so 550 and also write into the memory again, uh, make it 600, 600, 100, um, parallel 600. Uh, a store word, very similar to load word, but you don't have to write to register file. You write to, um, to the memory. Um, and here we assume that either writing or reading from the memory has the same cost. This not again is artificial example, not the case. Uh, typically, um, writing to the memory should be more costly uh, than reading from memory. Uh, but assuming this, uh, it makes the uh, store word um, be more. Uh, quicker comparing with the load word uh, 550 picosecond. Um, so again, this is on the critical path. Um, branch taken, um, so we discussed this, like this incrementing PC. Um, so until it takes here 200 picosecond and maybe you need to pay a special attention here, right? So branch taken, so you need to first uh, read the instruction 200 picosecond. Uh, you need to read from register file um, 250. You need to generate this B condition. So using ALU, um, 100 more, 350. So 350 until you reach here and 200 until you reach here. And you know that like you should have both of these signal here in order to proceed, okay? So the red part is taking 350 here. This blue part is taking 200 picosecond. Assuming the data, but imagine in this case, um, like imagine, Imagine ALU operation was 300. Imagine instead of 100, ALU operation was 300, okay? So in this case, you get here, then you get here um, after 600 picosecond, right? How about this part? This part, 200, 250, and then um, ALU operation, we assume 300 uh, would be 550, right? So until you get here is 550, but you do not have 
the other one here by 550, it will be there by 600 picosecond, right? So then this is the critical path. So you need to make this red so you can proceed here, right? So after you have this, so this will be uh, on the critical path, uh, 600, and then you go here, uh, your critical path would be 600 as a result, okay? So if I, like say, if I change these numbers in your exam, um, make sure you understand this, you can calculate things, you can analyze and make a sense and determine the critical path and the time that it takes for, um, for example, say I ask you, um, what is the type of instruction that takes the longest? Um, and in this case, like branch taken, this part actually generating this signal that comes here is on the critical path, not the other part, right? Having changed the numbers. Um, again, these numbers sometimes may not be um, like uh, logical. Here we change it to 300 picosecond. Um, so it's too high comparing with the, say, the memory access, right? Um, but in like questions, you can vary these things even though they may not make sense. But like you should be able to, um, to analyze the still, like answer the question appropriately. Do you have any question about this? Uh, yes, I, I have a quick one just to yep. recap, make sure I'm seeing this right. So you said that for the, the branch taken that the blue path and the red path both have to make it to the multiplexer at the end in order for it to proceed. So that multiplexer is based on the longest path before it. Yes, yes. Okay, that, I just wanted to, I wanted to make sure I had that straight. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's, that's a very good question. Yes, because like uh, this multiplexer needs to, needs to decide and it requires most inputs uh, in order to decide which one to take, right? Um, so, um, so basically, um, you need to you need to uh, you need to be able to analyze the critical path. Uh, for this, you need to know the semantic of each instruction, right? So like these paths are not random, it's like based on the semantic of each instruction, uh, what part of the macro architecture you need um, and the data of the latency data that you have had in the table uh, here, right? Um, and then like this delay would be, I mean, here in this table, you do not see, um, for example, the other paths incrementing PC, but because in this example with this data, like the only things that will be determ determinant of this delay would be this, this stuff, not the uh, incrementing PC, but changing this data, like, might make the incrementing PC part on the critical path. Uh, so you, you know, um, you need to be able to uh, know the semantic of each instruction and incrementing PC is part of the semantic of each instruction. And really like this incrementing PC and determining the next PC would, would vary from one instruction to other instruction, specifically would vary from R and I type to branch and jump, right? So we already know that. Um, so we should be able to like, using the semantic of each instruction, using the um, um, microarchitecture plots like this, should be able to determine the critical path for, for each. And just again, to make sure I'm clear, the critical path is just the path through the microarchitecture that takes the longest. Correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So if you have like multiple paths uh, for for an instruction, um, and again, like we discuss it in multi-cycle, uh, this is stuff that there, um, like we split each instruction into multiple stages, right? Um, there, the critical path is, I mean, we are not thinking in terms of like, the, I mean, the, the time that it takes to execute an instruction is important, uh, but in each cycle, part of the, um, part of each instruction will be executed. Um, but in single cycle, like as you see, like we have the whole thing, um, the whole instruction until the very end, from the beginning, from the stage one, all the way to stage six, uh, where we, um, we store the data, right? So from um, basically, um, fetching instruction, decoding, executing, uh, memory access and writing um, the result um, would be all um, all part of the uh, each cycle um, associated to each instruction. That's that's somehow um, So these are the um, each uh, each part of the each steps in in the instruction from fetching, decoding, evaluate, address, fetching operand, execution, and store results. Um, all of these happening in one cycle, right? So um, you need to be able to use the semantic of each instruction. Um, incorporate the knowledge that you have for each macro architecture, like for example, single cycle, knowing that all, all of these stages should happen in one cycle um, and like using the right data in the question as you get um, and doing this analysis, uh, right? Determining the critical paths or other type of question that uh, you may encounter um, somewhere. Um, Doing, this is again like related to performance analysis. We discuss a lot about performance analysis so far in this course. So um, these are relevant um, to computer architecture and you should be able to do these analytical um, stuff uh, accordingly. Okay, um, so let's see. Um, And sometimes um, I guess we should finish this soon. We'll be finishing soon. Uh, let me wrap up. Um, so about the control uh, logic, um, like here in this case, um, what we assume was that the uh, generating the control logic um, has no cost because assuming that executing the uh, combination logic was zero, we explicitly assume that um, in this question, right? But sometimes even this um, generating the control logic could be on the critical path. So specifically, it is generated based on, uh, say, the other uh, one, uh, the other. Um, paradigm where you generate it based on um, reading from the memory. So you, you store the control signal in the memory there, you need to like read it from the memory. Um, but you know that um, executing combina even combination logic is also assuming that the zero cost, zero latency uh, is not realistic uh, because it takes time, although it's very quick. Okay. Um, we discuss this and um, yeah. So I'm, since we already have discussed 
this um, in previously. I'm not going to explain them again. Um, for example, we discuss about this replication of resources. Um, as you see, like for example, we have like adder um, because we need to use that. Uh, we need to have this adder as a part of the macro architecture for incrementing PC and also having um, having A and U separately. Uh, because uh, both both of these resources are needed, and since we need them in one cycle, we need to uh, repeat that. We need to have additional resources, which would otherwise we could synchronize this stuff. So in one cycle, you could use the other part of the ALU in for incrementing. Um, next cycle, you should you could use like. Um, like execute R type um, or any other functions that you expect from ALU um, in another cycle uh, by just coordination. But this wouldn't happen in single cycle, as you already know, um, because of this restriction. Um, and one other important thing that um, we discuss is, is the case where, like um, in this single cycle, if you have a structure that is um, very common, like for example, this multiplication and addition in machine learning systems, right? So if this were supposed to uh, run in single cycle, um, we know that never multiplication or addition would be on the uh, critical path comparing with like the instruction that read from memory. So like any improvement, performance improvement in this instruction doesn't uh, add any value or doesn't make uh, our system any more, any better uh, if we were running it in single cycle, um, right? So which is not a good thing uh, to have. Um, and it forces us to optimize the worst case in all the time. Um, so essentially, um, we have some, uh, on the other hand, if you think about this, I'm putting into the contrast with the uh, principles of, uh, or design principle of macro architecture is um, three things, uh, critical path design, uh, mainly uh, finding and decreasing uh, the maximum combination logic delay, um, breaking a pass into multiple cycles if it takes too long, which is um, not part of the single cycle. So in single cycle, again, we discussed um, that uh, this is not happening and um, any improvement um, needs only, we can only, improve performance by just the longest, finding the longest instruction and trying to um, decrease the time uh, as much as possible, which is not um, what, so it restricts us or the architects by doing any, any performance improvement, um, which doesn't lie on the critical path. Uh, and also like the common cases, this addition and multiplication, as I mentioned in machine learning system, like um, because these are common uh, instructions in this type of uh, systems, by improving these common cases, we wouldn't gain any uh, improvement. And also we don't have balanced design in um, single cycle uh, because of this repetition and repetition of the um, hardware. And also, um, if you remember, like in some instruction, uh, like jump, the part of the macro architecture, which like if we go back to this, so um, in jump, you see, we only use this part of the macro architecture the whole part of the macro architecture here, ALU, register, memory, doing nothing. Uh, these are idle. Um, basically, 
we, we do not exploit this. Um, even though we could, like if we did not have the restriction of one instruction in each cycle, like we could like use this for some other instructions down the line, right? If we, for example, know what instruction we want to like execute next, so we could make a use out of this hardware, which we paid for it, but like for some instruction, we do not use it, right? So this is what is called balanced design. Um, or on the other hand, like increasing the utility or utilization of all hardware resources that we have at the macro architecture, um, which clearly doesn't happen in single cycle, um, right? So, so this um, single cycle uh, macro architecture doesn't meet any of these important design principle of macro architecture. Um, again, critical path design, uh, common case design and balance designs are uh, the key um, design principle of uh, good microarchitecture. And if you want to um, read more about um, this, I um, there are some references here that you can take a look in order to, if you are interested, again, these are not mandatory, but for example, say um, this one is very important uh, paper um, by Lampson. Uh, there is actually a new version of it uh, came out, I guess, this year. Uh, hints for computer system design, uh, one of the very interesting articles um, that talk about um, like design principle of uh, computer system performance analysis and all of what we have discussed uh, so far. Um, so let's stop here, um, and then we we move on to multi-cycle um, for the um, for the next lecture. Um, I would stay here for a few minutes if you have any question. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Sure. Okay, there is a question. So the proper microarchitecture is used throughout the cycle. Uh, Eric, if you are still here, I'm um, not sure what do you mean. Um, do you want to elaborate if you are still around? Um, will there be a practice exam? Probably not. For midterm, no, but maybe for the final. Um, but like um, you can consider this homework and uh, quizzes as a practice exam. Like again, there wouldn't be any surprises. As long as like you follow the lectures and uh, the discussions that we have, and hopefully read the um, two chapters of the book, um, chapter uh, six and seven, uh, the um, the architecture and macro architecture, the assembly part, and also macro architecture, um, you should be you should be fine. Okay, bye.